Good to see you, Eric Davis. Good to be here. All right, so it's now time. Uh huh. Romo's come back. Uh huh. He goes through practice this week successfully. He'll have completed his rehab from his back. Yeah. So that means he's ready to go. Yeah, he's ready to go. If you're in charge of the Cowboys, <laughs> you tell Dak to take a seat with a seven-game win streak? I don't know. You don't now? I changed my mind. Okay. Yeah. I changed my mind. So the polls were wrong is what you're saying. The Eric Davis uh, poll has been wrong so far. No. No. I mean, I, I'm just looking at what the way the team, what's going on. I believe Romo could have won those games. Okay. I think they could be in the same position if he had been healthy doing it. I think that you get more from the playbook mm -hmm. if you bring him in. Uh, but what they are doing and the way they are winning and the way Ezekiel, the, it, this is not about the quarterback position. It's about the running game, the O line, the running game, mm -hmm. and their defense. Those elements are better because of um, um, Elliott. And, and Zeke, Zeke has everything working. So now the element of the, the, the addition of the run that you have from the quarterback position, it's going well. I'd leave it alone because you're going to make the move anyway next year. He's playing well right now. There's no reason. There's no reason to, to take him off. He's been there long enough. So that's it. Until unless he gets hurt. Unless he gets hurt. What if he? What if he looks like say Wentz looked in MetLife? He's this going week to against the Giants. He's going to at some point. At some point, he's going to. Is this the week he looks well, you, like? Now? Well, you hope he wins. I mean, he, well, he had one of those games already, and he came back and won it. The Philadelphia yeah. game. So you know, and he'll have another moment like that. But if he can find ways for you to still win the games, what if when he he's has, playing ugly, what if he has all four quarters like that against Pittsburgh and they're seven and two? Do you then go to Romo, then or at this point, it's Dak's gig, unless he gets hurt, and then Romo has to come in bled so like in two thousand one. Maybe I th I believe that's what's going to happen. I think Dak has played long enough now and I think the offense is playing well enough the, the team forget the offense the team is playing well enough now um because you look at what the defense is doing what the run game is doing what Dak is doing to quarterback position all of those things in conjunction have them to a point to where I think it's going to take more than a, a bad play mm -hmm. a bad game because one bad play one good play one bad play doesn't make a player one bad game one good game doesn't make a player I think he's beyond the point to where you're going to say one bad game let's take him off the field I, I think that I, because so because of that, I think you don't make the change. Do you think the Cowboys need to make an announcement? No. To essentially say, it's Dak's job. No. So week to week, he's just going to be asked the question, Garrett, who's starting this week, and it'll each week it'll just be Dak, and then the question will be why, and then he's going to have to say he gives us our best chance to win, or no, all he has, Dak is the quarterback. Because you know it's coming. But, but the Dak, questions are there. But you, it's but the you don't have to. The, you don't have to make an announcement. He's on the field. He's on the field and he's playing. But each week, the the, the only the only person that has to say something mm -hmm. is Jerry Jones because the only person who said something was Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is the one that came out and said when he Romo's ready, Romo's going to be the quarterback. So now he has to, well, Romo's ready. Is Romo still the quarterback? He's the only one that has an answer to that. The coaching staff, you just go out and do what you do. Dak doesn't have to answer that question. Romo's going to be asked. And I imagine Romo's going to say, I'm ready to go. And as soon as they tell me, I'll be back on the field. I would expect him to say that because he still believes that, you know, that, that he should be on the field. Of course, he's going to believe that. Dak is on the field. See, here's, here's the issue I have with all this. And again, it might be once again member of media wondering why are why why is this not being paid attention to more? Because we're talking about it. It can't just go so simply as this. Of the yeah, Dax there, Romo's healthy. He's playing well or not playing well, and it's just each week no one's going to ask about it. Players aren't going to be asked about it. Won't be somebody reading into what somebody's saying. Jerry Jones is going to be in that scrum in the locker room as he always is after a win or a loss, saying something. It can't just be as what you're saying right now. It can as, as bumpy less as it, you're it making can, it out to see. It seem. can if they're winning. And I, I was just looking at their schedule, and I, I mean, they should be the number one seed. I can see them finishing up like twelve and four, and. It, and the road goes through the Jones Mahal. And and there's no reason. The, the questions will answer themselves. It's like, do why is he playing? Because they're winning. <laughs> why right. is he still on the field? Because they're winning. 
because he's performing. That's it. So uh, unless he plays himself out of the position right now, I think he's going to be there. Yeah, home- and and I but I still believe there's more playbook if you put Tony Romo in it. Yeah, they're home for the Steelers. They're at the Steelers, then the home for the Ravens, and then the Redskins is the Thanksgiving game, after which a full week's rest on a Thursday night or in Minnesota. After which they get a minute by. They're at the Giants, home for the Bucks, Lions, and then at the Eagles to finish up. That's There's a lot of wins on the table right there. I've got mm-hmm. Eric Davis here on the Rich Eisen Show. What, what You still think the Steelers are we're fine? You're going to give me the Aaron Rodgers relaxed speech about the 4-4 four and four Steelers? Uh, well, I'm, I still think that, that at the end of the day, they're going to win their division, so they're still going to be there. So this is that – they always get beaten up and they always get ugly okay. and, um, you know, when they're not healthy and they lose games, and I think that they'll be able to straighten it out. I think there's still time for them. I'm, you, still, I'm still on the Steelers. I haven't stepped away yet. Okay, I'm wondering if they're the poll question answer. Go ahead and ask the poll question of Eric Davis here. <laughs> Eric, which 4-4 four and four team has the best chance to make the playoffs? So there's six, Dolphins, Ravens, Steelers in the AFC, Eagles, Packers, Saints, NFC, four and four team. Uh, Four and four team. Uh, The the best would be the, um, I I think the best one would be the Packers. Why why do you still believe in them? Um, Because I still think that everything else in their division is going to come back to them. They can still, I, I, I still think that, there's magic in Aaron Rodgers, no matter what. And I think that everything else and the, the rest of the division can come back at any time. Stafford's playing well. I, I, you know, I, I think he's really playing well, but mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they're ready to pull away. Uh, Minnesota uh, has, you know, Sam Bradford is starting to look like Sam Bradford. Uh, so I think that's, that gives them an opportunity to get back in the hunt. Chicago is not going to jump in it. So, I, I, you know, I, I still think they have an opportunity to win their division. Eric Davis here, Fat Mouthing Wednesday on the Rich Eisen Show. So what is the deal with Jared Goff, man? Here we are. They're saying that they're not going to play him until they're out of the playoff hunt. There's three and five. I'm not saying that they are. Season's not over as we saw. The 0-3 Saints are now 4-4. Four and four. I get it. But, I mean, w- w- what is wrong? With, is, is it still safe to ask the question, is there something wrong with Jared Goff, or what? What is happening? That was the here plan. In Los Angeles? That's that's Jeff Fisher. That was his plan. That he was going to go into it, and he has a certain mindset. It, the funny thing about it, as ugly as that game was with the Panthers, the Jeff Fisher formula: play good defense, keep it close, have an opportunity to win the game. If they make the field goals, and you catch if Kendrick catches the one in, mm-hmm. in the end zone, they win the game. It and they're four and four. And you wouldn't be saying, well, should you put him in right now? Because they're four and four. That's that. That's I know Jeff is looking at it that way. Okay. That these guys, if they execute, then they'll still be there. It's not on the quarterback. I think the quarterback has maxed out. I think Case is, I heard a lot of guys say this isn't what he signed up for. He signed up for a team with the running game and his receivers need to do more and everything. But, well, they didn't, they also didn't draft him to be the starter. And I think he's maxed out where he's going to be. And you need a lot of guys to play perfect ball around him. They don't think Jared Goff is ready to do that, that to step in and play right now. That's, that's the only reason I can get behind it. I Before I was saying, you know, I was sitting here telling you, and I was saying that Dak Prescott should come off the field mm-hmm. and Goff shouldn't be on the field. I'm saying that Dak Prescott should stay on the field mm-hmm. And it's time for, I, I think you should put Jarrett Goff in. I think so, too. Yeah. You know, I think it should be Goff versus Petty, not Keenum versus Fitzpatrick this week. But it looks like that's what we're going to get. No, but the, the, still, what we don't know and what we haven't seen is how he performs. Because at practice, you can look at it and, you, and, and they're in a the meeting room and mm-hmm. he's sitting next, next to Case. And you know whether or not he's ready to play. And he I simply so. may not be ready to play. Eric, good to have you here, brother. Good to be here. Thanks for oh. popping back down yeah. here, as yeah. always. We'll see you on NFL Network. That's Eric da- Eric Davis right here in studio. Lamar Woodley, our number two. Dabo Swinney and Andy Garcia, our number three. The Chris Command Center news update. If you did not see or hear what happened in the NBA last night. It was an officiating snafu, to say the least. But it's different than the one that happened in the NFL, I'll tell you that. Hour two coming up. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.